or in the latter part of this book down here at the last we're going to start at 56 tonight so we only got about 10 more chapters to go so we want to see how we can get through here tonight and then we'll um, decide the rest of the schedule based on how far we get tonight my goal is to get to two or three chapters tonight um, Appreciate everybody coming out. Appreciate those watching online. I got an alert earlier today. Somebody, somebody was online watching at 5.30. So I'm like, wow, they're an hour early for church. So maybe if that's you, were you on there an hour early with that type of anticipation? If it was, that's great. So let's go to Isaiah, the 56th chapter. And we're going to start here in the 10th verse. Now, as I've talked about the, the book of Isaiah, we've noticed that he's, got, he's on this roller coaster. One minute, he's warning the people. The next minute, he's warning the preachers. Next minute, he's talking about the great things that's going to happen through the Messiah and the second coming. And so it's that roller coaster all through this book. And so we're back. Like on Sunday, we were working with him sending his word. That is a parallel. Not only the words that we speak, but he sent Jesus. And so there we were dealing with the first advent. Everybody say first advent. That's the first coming of Christ. Then we got the second advent that he's going to deal with over here in the 60s. If just turn over to there, as the scripture says, oh, that I would rend the heavens. That's the 64th chapter. He's dealing with the second advent. In the 64th chapter, the first verse, oh, that thou wouldest rend the heaven. So Christ is going to come back at the second advent. So that roller coaster, Isaiah just, he's like an average preacher. You know, you get up, you start talking about one thing, and then the Lord directs you on something else, and you, you hammer that. And we have Isaiah doing that through his writing. So now we're back at warning the preachers. It says in the, in the 56th chapter, starting in verse number 10, his watchman. He starts there with the watchman, and he says they are blind. Wow. He said they are all ignorant. What a, what a lovely church. What a great preacher. Wouldn't you just love to have a pastor that says you're blind? Then he says you're ignorant. You know, then he says you're like dumb dogs. We're at 56 verse 10. Then the next thing you know, it says, hey, y'all are dumb dogs. He says, you're so dumb, you don't even know when to bark. He says, they can't bark. They cannot bark. They're sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. This is how Isaiah just hammering it out. And uh, he's dealing here with the leadership because he says his watchman. Then he says, they are not only slumbering, sleeping, dumb. He says, they're greedy. Look at verse 11. They're greedy which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. Would you want a, a leader like that? They can't, doesn't have any knowledge of what's happening. I believe that is prophetic of knowing the times and the seasons. Said they're, they cannot understand and they all look their own way. Everyone for his gain and none, gain, all for his gain from his quarter. So what can he get? He's looking for the sources his quarter, his environment, what, what he can gain. He says, come ye say that I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves even with strong drink and tomorrow sh shall be as this day and much more abundant. So kind of sounds like prosperity preachers too. You know, hey, we're going to fill up on this. Everything's going well. Uh, we're gathering, we're growing. The shepherds are flourishing. The sheep are not doing anything because they're being raped. They're being, uh, what is it when you shear? They're shearing the sheep. And all they're doing is living off of the, the wool and the sheep are not prospering at all. And then this, a big turn happens here. So he's doing this warning. And then we get back to the people in the 57th chapter. I can remember like yesterday, the first time I heard my pastor deal with Isaiah 57 and verse number one. We had had some people in the church that had passed away and, um, and some died early, at an early age. I was talking to a gentleman today and his cousin died at, at uh, 48 and uh, he thought he was young. You know, he, I, I say that's young. 
Uh, he, and he was like, man, we lost him at an early age. And I remember my pastor dealing with this scripture based on someone dying that was righteous. It goes here in Isaiah 57. So we're in the next chapter. The righteous perish and no man lay it to heart. And the merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. I also used when uh, Sister Myra Clark died, I used uh, this same verse. Uh, being young, dying, being like a, an angel, uh, very faithful to the church, uh, sing like a bird, all of those things. And it just seemed like when she was taken away, it, it was just too sudden. It was just shouldn't happen. No parent should have to bury the child. Um, and then she being next to the youngest of, I think, what, six children, um, just it was devastating. But here we see that. And no man laid it to heart. Nobody's taking note when the righteous leave us. That's what he was saying. He's saying here, let's read that again. He said, the righteous perish and no man laid it to heart. We need to wonder, why did that person leave us? Why did they go away so quick? What was going on? He said, merciful men are taken away. People that we would think would always be around there. They did things in a godly way. The living Bible says the godly die before their time. And no one seems to care or wonder why. No one seems to realize that God is taking them away from the evil days ahead. So I remember my pastor working on, on that. That person left because there were some things ahead that may have pulled them away. The evil days ahead. You know, God will never lose. And I would rather leave early than to, to go late and lose out. And so he, God being sovereign, knowing all things, knowing the end from the beginning, he could say, you know, that, that person may get tied up in some things. And before that happens, we'll just take them away. And so we need to consider that. It makes you want to stay humble, makes you want to stay contrite. We're going to work on that word a little bit tonight as well. He said, he shall enter into peace and they shall rest. I want to deal with the dead a little bit. A lot of people wonder when somebody dies, where do they go? What happens to them? That's a, a great mystery. Um, the dead are dead. Uh, they die. If you die in the Lord, you can be what we would consider sleep. Uh, it says in the book of Lamentations, I mean, it says in the book of Acts that they lamented over the death of Stephen. So when Stephen died, Stephen saw Jesus at the right hand of the Father, he wasn't sitting. I told you that little story Sunday about the, the little boy said that uh, God must be good with his left hand because Jesus is sitting on his right hand. Well, here, I, when Stephen saw him, he said, I saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, Acts chapter 7. And so you say, well, Stephen saw him. Stephen was a martyr. He was a deacon. The Bible says, go pick out seven men filled with the Holy Ghost. So Stephen dies, a young man. Most historians say he was about 17 years old. And it says, and they lamented. Let's just get that for a moment. Go, hold your finger in Isaiah. We'll get that if we could find that in Acts. It says, and they lamented over the death of uh, Stephen. I used that verse of scripture in Des Moines when Sister um, Pam Goodwin passed away, I used this verse to, to, to express to the local church and to Brother Glenn Goodwin, it's okay to cry. It's okay to be sad when someone leaves us. Is it Acts 7? Yes, Acts 7, no, it's uh, Acts 8, excuse me, Acts chapter 8 and verse number 2. It says here that Saul, we're talking about Saul, all of a sudden there's a little insert as they were dealing with Saul before he became Paul. And verse two says, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial. Those three words are italicized, to his burial. And that means it wasn't in the original text. It says, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lament lamentation over him. So there was some, some crying. These devout men, I believe they were probably the apostles, the disciples, other Deacons like Stephen, if you go back to chapter number six, it says, go find out some, some men that are holy, uh, that can serve the church. Men in verse number five of Acts chapter number six, it says, uh, and these uh, pleased the whole multitude. They rose 
Uh, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost. Then it gives a list of some other brethren that are, are listed there. Um, but it go, go back to verse 3. This is what their resume needed to be like. It says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men. First, they must have an honest report. Second, they must be full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. I would say that would be third. And whom we may appoint over the business. They're willing to serve. And when they get commissioned to do something, they would do that. And said, we want them to have those characteristics. And Stephen was one of them, a man full of faith. Then he passes away, being stoned, being killed. And they lamented over that. And so we need to recognize when someone leaves us early, when they leave us ahead of time, what we would think uh, the scripture says in the Psalms 90 that a person can live to 70 by a reason of strength, 80. Uh, we, but we find in Genesis chapter number six, it was first initially given that a person would live to be 120 years old. Then we had the, the, the flood. After the flood, Moses give that, that direction, maybe 70 or 80. But prior to that, it was about 120 you could live. God said that a person could live on grace. If, we, if you want to mark that down for reference, Genesis chapter number six, one of the verses that I quote every day, that the Lord's going to give me long life from the book of Psalms. And then I say in uh, Genesis chapter number six, verse number three, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. And so I say that every day, um, and I want to live that long, and that means, but I don't want anybody else to marry Sister Brintley, so you where she at. So you're going to have to, when, when I leave at 120, I guess you'll be about 118, 119, and you, we'll just go on and meet the Lord together. Is that all right? All right, good. All right, so... Um, Back in Isaiah 57, it says, He shall enter into his peace, and they shall rest in their beds. Here, here we have a, an example of what happens when a person leaves this world. Um, we can look at, um, Jesus said, uh, in me, you can have eternal life and never die. I believe that. I believe you don't have to die. I believe you can be changed in a moment and twinkling of an eye. I believe you can uh, leave this earth and if you're an overcomer, you die the way that the Lord would have you to, to be in that state, then you would be absent from the body, present with the Lord. What does that mean? What does that transition look like? Well, we have the grave. It can be a transition. Uh, and it can be so quick. you someone that would pass away when they would go into that, that stage. And when they awake in the presence of the Lord, it would be like that, just that quick. They wouldn't even know. They, you go, if you were to talk to, to Stephen, for an example, at the resurrection or in the kingdom, you'd ask Stephen, how long have you been, how long has it been since you left us? And uh, he may say, I, I think it was just a minute ago, a second ago. Uh, I don't, it didn't seem like it's been 2,000 years. Or it, because the Bible tells us in the grave, there's no knowledge. There's no knowledge in the grave. We don't know what's happening, what's going on. And so your loved ones are not around what, that, that's gone ahead of you or not uh, hanging around and, and, and honing you. Some of you may think you're being haunted, but you're, I don't believe in ghosts. The only ghost I believe in is the Holy Ghost. And so you're not being haunted uh, by your loved ones and um, God's watching over you. And so we do have an examples in the scriptures in the book of Revelations where it says the, the, uh, the souls under the altar, they're crying, uh, they're weeping. We do have scriptures in the book of Hebrews that says we have a great cloud of witnesses. And so we have to balance all those scriptures. We have the 24 elders around the throne. We got celestial bodies, terrestrial bodies. And then in the new, the new heaven and new earth, everyone will have a body like his. So I'm not going to go through all of that tonight, but there has to be a balance in the scriptures. And so you got to find out what is their beds? How did they die? It said, he shall enter into peace and they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Isn't that kind of contradicting itself? They're resting and walking at the same time. Well, in the mind of God, no one ever dies. 
They don't die in the mind of God. He said, Abraham, he said, uh, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Uh, he said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, God doesn't, doesn't use death like we use death. The Bible tells in Ecclesiastes, the spirit goes back to him that gave it. So God knows, and that's when there's time for resurrection time. He can say, I need that one, I need that one, I need this one. And in, in God's mind, you never died. You're still alive. And so here, he, he uses this illustration, and he says, they shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. And the way he left here, the way she left here, they're still in that until that coming again of the second advent when he'll put one foot on the sea, one foot on the land. And the Lord's helped us to understand that, to get a glimpse over into the promised land. He did that with Moses in the natural. He's done that with the, he did that with the body of Moses and he's done it with the body of Christ. He's given us an opportunity to have a glimpse into the coming of the Lord, the second coming, his second advent. And we've been blessed to be able to see that. And that's why we have a hope. Who was it a couple of weeks ago? Maybe it was Sister Alicia, I think, that said we, if we didn't have that hope, we'd be individuals most miserable. But we have a hope, don't we? So we don't stay there in that, in that state. And so let's go down here to verse number 15. For as thus saith the Lord, the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth eternity. So we see God in a state of never dying. He's got the living with him at always, always in his heart, in his mind. The books have been written. Your name should be in that book. No matter what age, what time, what dispensation you leave this earth, you're, you should still be in the heart of the Almighty. Why? Because he's eternal. He says, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. He said, I dwell in the high and holy place, Brother Clay touched on that Sunday that we need to go up higher. We need to be on that next level. We need to look up. Uh, Psalm says for, I think Brother Clay quoted that, so look unto the hills which come with my help. Uh, it says here, high and a holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit. Let's work on those two words. Anybody want to guess what does contrite mean? That's an old we don't go around using that term. That's a King James uh, old English word. Anybody a wordsmith tonight? Contrite. Now, if y'all don't know what the word means, that might mean y'all ain't contrite. If I say, are you humble? You go, oh yeah, I'm humble. Run the, let's run the aisles. Y'all Googling it? Okay. Submissive. Yes, all that's good. Very similar to, similar to humble. Basically, it just means crushed. You don't have anything else to give. You know, an olive is no use. I mean, I guess it's some use, but it's most use is after it's been crushed. Um, there's so many other things that can come from the olive oil than just the olive itself. So that same word is used there, crushed, We've got everything out of us that we don't need, and we got the good out of us, and we are living a, in a spirit of, of um, brokenness. Uh, we walk around knowing that um, we, without God, we're nothing. He makes us complete. You remember the old nursery rhyme? Where's Ava Grace at? The old nursery rhyme, rhyme uh, Humpty Dumpty. And so he was crushed, he got, a little, he got broken, but it says they all came back and put, they, the, they put him back together. That's what we need the Lord to do with us, isn't it? You know, when he puts us back together, he puts us back together right. So even when we break up, we're like a, we can be a broken cistern. A broken cistern is cracked. We're all crackpots, hallelujah. You say, how would you shout about that? Because I know the one to fix the crack pot. We're all crack pots. And so you, when the Moe de Clay comes and sings here at the church, they usually have a little display of a crack pot. And um, when a pot's cracked, it can't hold water. 
You know, it doesn't hold things. It's, not, it's really not useful anymore. It needs to be thrown away. Could be crushed. Could be done away with. But God takes the crack pot and he fixes it. He, he remolds it. He, he, that area that's broken, he works on that. He's the potter. We're the clay. And he's working on that. And it's, there's two hands working on every piece of pottery. You got one hand on the inside, one hand on the outside. I always type that. The hand on the inside is God. The hand on the outside is the ministry. And as that pot's going around, both of them are working on it to make that pot what it needs to be. And so that's what I'm doing right now. God's working on your heart. I'm speaking words in, uh, out, going up from your outer man. You're hearing it through your ear gate while God's speaking to your inner man through your heart, uh, the heart of your mind, your soul, and working on that to give you light. And so we need to be contrite and humble. Let's go back to verse 15 and finish this. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So this great holy God is working on people that are contrite and people that are humble. He's reviving the heart, making them to be what they want to be. Sister Jenny, if we can get verse 16 in the living, I, um, I may can get it here on this too, but let's get that in the living Bible because it says God will not always contend with man. Verse 16, I'll read in the living, I mean the King James, for I will not contend forever. I think the, the, uh, the Amplified Classic may say frustrate. Uh, from God being frustrated, neither will he always be wroth. I like this scripture in verse 16. For I will not fight against you forever, the living says. I will not always be angry. If I were, all people would pass away and all the souls I have made. So God's saying, I'm not going to always come in that spirit of, of destroying. Let's get that in the Amplified Bible. It says um, in the Amplified, verse 16, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry for... If I did stay angry, the spirit of man would grow weak before me, weak before me. And the breath of those whom I have created. And so God's saying, look, um, I'm not going to always be that type of father. You know, I, I, that's not how I'm going to always be. I'm going to show you I have other sides to that, but I need you to work with me. I need you to be humble. I need you to be uh, contrite, not fighting me. God's saying, I'm, I don't like you fighting me. Verse number 19, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace. He repeats it at verse 19. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near. Both. God's trying to work with them. He said, for saith the Lord, underline this, this might be for somebody tonight. He says in verse 19, the last part, and I will heal him. Let's go back to the King James. And I will heal him. Peace, peace. So he's working from a, from a, a, a fatherly standpoint. He wants to bring healing to us. He said, but the wicked are like the troubled sea, verse 20. They're the ones fighting me. They're tossed to and fro. They're up and down. He said, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. He said, that's the wicked. You know, I praise God that that's not us. We're not the wicked. Just because you just because you had a heart to come to the house of the Lord, because you're watching online, you're not wicked. See, some people want to take these scriptures uh, if someone sinned or erred, and they want to automatically apply this. Oh, you're wicked. No, that's not. This is told. These are ungodly people. These is individuals that don't even want to call on God, but we still know to call on Him, don't we? when we get in a time of trouble. So that's not us. Uh, we're not throwing up mire and dirt because in those people, there is no peace. Verse 21, there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Well, we do have peace and he hasn't taken that away. Let's jump into chapter 58 and verse number six. He says, now, if you want to do like I want you to do and be like I want you to be, I want to I wanna use a word and I want y'all to write down this word tonight in this fasting. How often do you fast? Well, every night you fast. That's when you get up and you eat breakfast, 
Break down that word. Put down that word in your notes. You break your fast. The, problem, the issue is you sleep. And you're not praying or reading your Bible, but you're fasting. Well, that's, that's, that's the type of fast. But there's other ways to fast. You can fast. Um, and we're going to just use food right now. You can fast from 6 to 6. We have that in the Bible. Daniel had a fast. There were certain things he would only eat, nuts and berries. Ezekiel had a fast. It was a type of, of a bread that he would eat, and that would be it. And so there's all types of fast in the Bible. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, and most historians say it was nothing but that. Uh, Moses did a 40-day fast, and I think it said he had water. So you can go on a water fast. Uh, I remember fasting, the longest I've ever fasted was 21 days. I remember fasting one time and uh, I was working and I went to uh, one of my clients and they had peppermints on the, on like we have in the waiting area. They had a little bowl of peppermints and I remember getting one of those and I'm on a 21 day fast, right? And I got one of those and went back to the office and I was talking to my, my brother and he was like, um, what is that paper? Because I threw the paper away. I said, I had a peppermint over there. He said, you broke your fast. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, what? He's like, yeah, you can't have that. I remember fasting and um, a, a liquid only fast. You know, we could do juice and, and, um, but, and, but no food. And I remember going through, the was it Wendy's? One of them, I got, no, it wasn't Wendy's because they don't do milkshakes, do they? I said, this, this has to be a liquid, you know, and I'm going to have this. But So you, there's all kind of fast out there, sun up to sun down, different kinds. But here, G, God inspires Isaiah to talk about a different type of fasting. He says in verse number six, is not this the fast that I have chosen? This type of fast is to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden uh, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. And so he goes through this. He says that's not so much about food. But he said in verse 7, it's not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou uh, bring the poor that are cast out of thy house. When thou seest the naked, thou shalt cover him, when thou, uh, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. And so this is a different type of fast. This is a, a type of fast to take care of the poor, to help the needy, uh, to have an open mind, to give up some of your own stuff to help them. You know, in Jesus' time, he said uh, it was a law. It was a Roman law that if a Roman soldier came up to you and said, hey, carry my pack a mile, you had to do it. That was a law. Uh, he could come up and say, give me your coat, not only your coat, give me your vest too. And um, no, he could only say, give me your coat. Well, Jesus changed both of those. He said, the law says that if a Roman cent uh, centurion comes and says, give me your pack and take it a mile, Jesus said, take it two miles. He said, if they come and ask you for your coat, don't just give them your coat, give them your undercoat too. He said, Give, go, go beyond that. So it was a law Jesus was dealing with when he dealt with that. And so my point is, we need to help those that are needy. And there's ways we can do that. We can do that by giving them some of the stuff we have. We have a lot of stuff in excess. Brother Ty and I are going to go, I'll talk about it a little bit when I close. Brother Ty and I are going to go shopping tomorrow um, and get some stuff to send to Africa. And um, we're going to ask the church to help us as well. But we, it can be things that, and Ty, Brother Ty mentioned this, there's things here in America. He said people change wardrobes with the season. And then where do they get? They take them to the thrift store or Goodwill or wherever, you know. And so we do that in America. Well, in some countries, they don't have that luxury. So we can fast those kind of things. You say, well, is that really a fast? Yeah, you give up something. Um, but you, you don't, don't just always give away the stuff you don't want anymore. Sometimes you might give away something that you, you liked or were using, or uh, if someone says, oh man, I like that what you're wearing or what you have on or something like that, um, you can say, would you like that? And they may want it, you know, and you can give it to them. 
And so we want to be able to help those that have less. It's not to deal just with bread to the hungry, but it's a whole lot more than just food. He goes on to say here in verse number nine, then shall thou call and the Lord shall answer and thou shall cry and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and the speaking vanity, if thou draw out of thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness as the noonday. So God is going to help us if we're willing to help others and to go without. He goes down here in verse 12 and says, I want you to have this type of mindset when you're fasting. I want y'all all to think about this. Write down these two words, repairer of the breach. You want to be a repairer of the breach. Kind of what we were talking about with the crack pots. What is the, a repairer of the breach? A breach is a, uh, something that's been divided. I was watching an illustration of some men that were making a bridge, a land bridge, and uh, in the water. And they would take these dump trucks and they would dump dirt, and then they would back back, and then they'd come another one and dump. Before you know it, they dumped so much dirt, and the bulldozer would push the dirt, and they got all the way across the lake dumping dirt. They became the repairers of the breach when you, because downstream the bridge had washed out. So they made a new one. So not only can you be a repairer of the breach, the second one he mentions in verse 12 is a restorer of the paths. Those are two different things, a repair of the breach and a restorer of the path. A restorer of the path is able to go back and get history and connect the current day with that generation, those traditions, and see where you can tie those together and marry those. And so often, Individuals just say, well, I, I wasn't born in that day. I don't care anything about that. No, another scripture says um, about the, the old past. How would that go? It says, um, uh, somebody help me about the old past. Google that, old past. Is that in Proverbs? It says we should be, um, remember. is it remembering the old past? I think that's how it goes. Uh, find that scripture for me. I want to use that tonight. That we, we not only can restore, but we shouldn't, you know, here, this is what I'm thinking about. Don't remove the ancient landmarks. That's what I'm thinking about. And so how do we do that? We are a restorer of the past. We go back and connect with that. And so two things, are you a breach repairer or are you a path restorer? Which one? Or can you be both? I feel like I'm a breach restorer. I feel like that's something the Lord's helped me with is when individuals are suffering and there's something that was, is no longer there, it's like I have some insight on how to bring that back and heal that. And uh, we wanna do that. Then someone may be a restorer of paths, help us reconnect with the old ways. All right, 59, let's go over into 59 here before we go home and look at the first verse in 59. It says, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Hopefully you get that. We say that a lot. Uh, thank you for that. Pro what was that? Did you, I want y'all to get that in your notes. Sister Jenny, we go back to that Proverbs, uh, the ancient landmarks. Proverbs 22, 28. Thank you. Put that down in your notes. All right, let's go back to Isaiah 59, verse 1. We quote this a lot. The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. But I like the latter part, too. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. When we pray tonight, don't you know the Lord's hearing our prayers? His ear is not heavy. It's not cut off. It's not blocked. He can hear our, what we're requesting for him. The only thing that hinders him from hearing is our lifestyle. Go to verse number two. This is a challenge that we in the body of Jesus Christ put emphasis on. A lifestyle, living right, being separated from the world. He said, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So the first verse said, his, he will hear. Well, what can keep him from hearing? 
It's our lifestyle. So we have a remedy to that. That doesn't in the church, that doesn't, when we see verse number two, don't mean we throw in a towel and give up and quit. No. We've got a, we've got a remedy to our sin. It's repent. Amen? Amen? You can repent and turn from your ungodly ways, and as soon as you repent, he hears that. Repentance, and then you deal with that issue, and you avoid doing that again in the future. The Lord's hand is not short. His ear is open, and... Um, we don't want to get into a, 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 a place of not being equitable. None calleth for justice, verse 4, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. This is the, the, the snake in the grass. This is that evil nature. Uh, he goes on to verse number 5 and talks about cockatrice, the snake. He talks about that spirit of a spider that wants to spin a web. Uh, he said that eateth their own eggs and die. <laughs> you know, you, you eat your own poison. Uh, you've got to be careful the things that come out of your mouth, the actions that you have. You can eat your own poison. You can, you can, draw, you can, you can create poison in your own life. You're the one that does it. We're not, you can't blame anybody else. You can't blame anybody else. It was a choice that you made. And when you make that choice, you put in, you can eat that, and you eat that, that's poison. It can kill you. And so we don't want to do that. And if we find ourselves in error, let's be quick to repent. Let's be quick to say, Lord, help me. I want to overcome that. I don't want to deal with that anymore in my life. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's, you can close your Bibles. I want to talk a little bit about our upcoming schedule. But before I do that, is there any questions? Any questions tonight? I know we went through those three or four chapters. But is there any questions? Comments? Y'all good? All right. Upcoming schedule. The book of Isaiah. We're gonna, I want y'all to read ahead of me. I feel like when you read ahead of me, it makes it easier to, to go through these thoughts. So um, November the 23rd, we're going to hit chapter number 60, okay? And I want to mention that on November 23rd, we'll be, there will be no in-person Bible study. And I'm going to stream at noon. So I'll be here, maybe Ty. Remember, was it last year we did it? Last year we streamed on, I call it Thanksgiving Eve, and we had the largest online audience. We had over 1,000 people watched us. So we gonna, then we try to do it another day, and, uh, and we got like 300. Yeah. So we don't know what, what was the formula to that noon Bible study, but we're going to make that as long as I, I feel led to do that. Um, as long as I feel led to do that, we'll do it. So every uh, Thanksgiving Eve, we will have a noon Bible study. And it'll probably just be me and someone to help me stream. Hopefully, maybe, not hopefully, Ty. You want to be gone, don't you, by then. But maybe it'll be me and Brother Ty here like last year. But if not, somebody will help me. But no in person. But we're going to do chapter number 60 next Wednesday, the 23rd. Reason I'm not putting anything on the calendar for Sunday is because uh, Pastor Chad Slaughter is going to be with us for our uh, fam friends and family day and our uh, fall homecoming, whatever you want to call it. Invite somebody, double the church in one day, all that good stuff. And so that will be this Sunday. So whatever Brother Chad's led to preach about would be great. Um, he's from uh, Raleigh. They'll be with us for the first time. All right, so after that, November 27th, we're going to go to chapter number 61. I want you all to jot these down if you can. That way you can read ahead of me. So I'll start over. 23rd will be chapter 60. 27th will be 61. The 30th will be 62 to 63. And then that takes us into December. So the December the 4th, we're going to go with 64 to 65, two chapters. 
December the 7th should be our last service on the book of Isaiah in the series. That'll be chapter 66. We'll wrap up on the 7th. And then on December 11th, we're going to launch the book of Mark. Okay? So we'll try to get that up on the screen for y'all while I go over some more announcements. All right. This be praying for me. Um, we definitely want to be praying for Brother Reggie. He's got a procedure on Friday. Um, I am scheduled to fly to Norfolk for the minister's meeting. So um, that will be on Friday morning. Uh, so be praying for me on that. Be back Saturday night. Um, that's this Friday. <laughs> All right. Look at Sister Jenny. Good. Um, all right, we are no longer streaming our altar services, that part of the service. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to, if possible, to avoid the back row. And y'all sitting on, not just cause y'all sitting back, I already had that row down, okay. <laughs> so it ain't got nothing to do with y'all. But if possible, because, it, well, I guess it kind of worked out tonight. Y'all going to help my little thought. So if somebody comes in a little late, they got somewhere to sit, they don't have to come down to the front, all right? So if you can, when y'all sitting, try to avoid the back row if you're early. If you're late, the back row is just perfect for you. All right. So um, uh, this Sunday, we touched on Brother Chad Slaughter coming. Sister Alicia, I want to thank her in advance for feeding us, providing a meal in the road team. And um, also this Sunday, we're going uh, to have a birthday cake for um, my birthday. And I guess it would pretty much be all the November birthdays. But my birthday is in November, so we'll have a cake. That'll be our dessert in the day service. The night service, we're going to have Twinkies. <laughs> All right, so um, be sure to be back here by 5.30 on Sunday night. Um, we're going to have the food trucks out front. I guess, Sister Alicia, are you going to leave it here all day? Okay, so it'll be out front and because it's getting dark early, and then we'll probably have them to get their food and go back into the dining room if they like. Okay, this Sunday is going to be a long day. Samaritan's Purse will be having a boxing day. Um, and also we're going to receive an extra offering for them for, to ship those items back to um, where I think it's on the, on the board where they're going. Anybody know? It's on the board where those items are going. All right. Um, this Sunday, Sister Jane wants to have a brief meeting with the Tea Party staff. Brothers, y'all know y'all can meet with me in my office prior to church on Sundays at 10, 15. Um, all right, while I'm on that, let me go to Brother Ty. Brother Ty has been with us a little bit over a year now, and he's scheduled to go back to, Zamp, to Zambia. Not, well, he's going to probably go to Kenya, too. Um, well, we know you're going to go to Kenya, aren't you? Um, Kenya's where he's from, but he's probably going to go to, well, he, we need him to go to Zambia. There's a project that we're working on in Zambia, and we've got some funding with the uh, USDA and with North Carolina A&T. Um, Brother Ty's degree in agriculture. Um, we've always had a plan with our assemblies to help them be self-sufficient. We got 15 around the world. And when Brother Ty and I first met, that was what we were trying to do, is help those assemblies be able to sustain themselves, that we as a local church don't fund them. We help them do what we can, but in order for them to be a strong local church, they need to have their own income. So we worked on that, and he went to Mozambique or Zimbabwe and, and in, in Kenya and has worked on that, but now we've got some assistance through the USDA to do some testing. Brother Ty has a contact in, in Florida 
that's going to be able to make the ground organic, pretty much. What is it, three years that the land has to rest? Three years is the normal time. So if you, if you want to do organic maize, which is corn, if you want to do that and you say you, you want to do it naturally, they say you got to let that land rest for three years to be organic. Well, you just lost three crops. So Brother Ty and his partner have developed some technology, some natural things that can treat the soil and the seed. And as a result of that, we can go from three years to that current planting season and be organic. So we really save. So he, they're going to do the testing. We're going to get that approved. Or our prayers to get that approved with the USDA, and it can it could actually change the whole continent, maybe change the world. And so we're praying for Brother Ty on that. He's waiting on them to just say, "Get your ticket and go." It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day, next week. So on in the back is some flyers, and we may have a slide for it too. Of um, some, some items that we want to help and give to Brother Ty to take with him. And um, I'll just touch a little bit on that, the little girls. Y'all see the two girls? That's the girl with the, with the bands around her neck. What those mean, and I don't know if I, if I own, if y'all got the OBS on, y'all can put that online too. They can see that. Um, what that means they, these are, is it Takura? What's the? Takana. In Takana, which is a neighboring tribe, and Ty, you can chime in anytime, to uh, the Tessos, where Brother Ty's from. It's like, a, we call it like their cousin, neighbors. And they are, that little girl has those beads around her neck. The one on the, I don't have my pointer. The one on the right has the white beads. Then on the left, there's a girl standing there. She's got yellow, white, red, a whole lot more. Well, those mean that once they get those, someone, a man, would put those on her to claim her. Am I right on that, Ty? And so how this little girl, not even 10 years old, has already had a quote unquote diary to be given to this man. And so the, in the orange, to, uh, right above the, 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 the girl in the blue with most of the beads is a, a lady in orange. Dorcas is her name. And Dorcas is, ta has taken this upon herself to help these young people. And, um, and so she's doing a work over there. And so we want to partner with her and help. And so Brother Ty has come up with these items. So we're going to go out tomorrow and shop. We're going to hit the Goodwills, the thrift stores, and places like that, and try to get as much of this as we can. And so the flyer is in the back. If you want to help, you can go get some of this stuff. We're going to need two. Brother Ty's going to take two large um, check bags, the biggest ones you can get. And we want to fill them up with stuff like from ages 4 to 11, boys' pants, girls' dresses, sportswear, socks, T-shirts, dress, uh, school dress, black shoes. So uh, black shoes that are dressed, we would just call a dress shoe. A sports shoe, like a, we would call a tennis shoe. Roller skates from ages 4, 6, 11, and 12. School bags, that's kind of like a backpack. Any kind of stationary pens or pencils. Any twin bedding, preferably not white. Okay, so colored bedding, colored towels as well, washcloths, towels. And um, we're going to get his traveling bag. If anybody wants to donate a large suitcase, a roller, for this, just let, just, you let me know or let Brother Ty know, and then we don't have to go out and try to find one. If anybody has an old phone, an unlocked phone, this won't be for the kids. This will be for, uh, I guess you're going to sell them? <laughs> what you going to do with these unlocked phones? <laughs> do what? I, I do you do that the files and all the 
parents. Okay, for communication. All right, so unlock phones. And then here, number eight, where they're not numbered on the screen, but number eight is numbered on the flyer. Everybody can grab one of these. Is closed for adults. Now, what we're asking for is, well, like we talked about the fast earlier, anything you don't want or something you can give away. We don't want anything threadbare. We don't want anything old or anything like that. But if you have some stuff you would like to give away, T-shirts, shirts, pants, dresses, adult sizes of your own stuff, we don't want to go out and buy any of that stuff, then bring that Sunday, okay? I know we got a lot going on. I'm adding it to Sunday. We might, it may be a week, two weeks before he leaves, but we're not sure. If, if North Carolina A&T says, all right, get your ticket, go, because they're right in the planning season right now, so there's a lot of urgency on it, then he may just have to go. We we're going to try to push this out a couple of weeks, but now because of the urgency, and I know we got a lot going on, and um, you're probably saying, what's Samaritan's Purse? What is Ty? What is this? You know, was then we got the people coming from the Dallas High Shows Ministry. We're going to receive an offering for them. It's just a lot on Sunday, but let's just you find one that you want to help with, and and if you help with that one, that'll be good enough. Okay, don't try to do it all. If you can do a little bit of all of it, that's great. All right, the Fellowship Band will be playing Sunday, I believe. Um, and then last thing on the announcement side is our family fun night. We launched that on Sunday. I want to remind everybody that will be our ninth one. It will be on at 6.30 on the 16th of December. So we're not going to talk a lot about it tonight. You can see anybody on the admin staff for tickets for the door prizes and the raffles. Remember, everybody will leave with something. Sister Rhonda Akers has done that for nine years, and she always makes sure it's fun, there's food, and all of that. Okay, let's take some prayer requests before we go. I want the online people to hear those announcements. Y'all talking about Brother Reggie? Anybody else? Me going to Norfolk? Sister Clay? All right. Brother Lonnie? Anybody else? Any prayer requests online? We're good. Joe Floyd. Who? Joe Floyd. Joe Floyd. Okay. That's your nephew, Bravo. Joe Floyd. Anybody else? Okay. Remember, you don't have any problems. All you got to do is remember Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for watching. All right, y'all, let's stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer over all these needs that were mentioned on my heart. And the most urgent one is Brother Reggie and Sister Alicia. We'll pray for you, too, because you, had, Brother Reggie's never had to deal with any type.